Hi guys, and welcome to SSW TV. I'm Adam Stevenson, and I'm here at Ignite on the Gold Coast. And I'm here with Namit and Rahul. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, you guys did a great session on Service Fabric. Yes, which, we did. And for those who don't know, Service Fabric is one of the offerings from Microsoft that let us do micro, that makes it easier to do microservices. Yes. Can you give us a bit of a high level, like where does it fit into the story? Yeah. So Service Fabric, uh, which was gone, uh, launched early this year is a distributed platform for hosting your microservices. Yep. The best part about Service Fabric is it is battle tested. Most of the service offerings from Microsoft, which runs in Azure, like uh, SQL Azure or maybe Bing or Cortana services or even Hub, is actually hosted on Service Fabric. Excellent. So a lot of those initial troubles which we have with platforms are already solved with this, this, this great platform which is in place. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're building on the same platform that Microsoft's building true. So they've fully dog-fooded it for you. That's true. Yeah, so that's that's pretty awesome. So when people when people are getting into Service Fabric, you know, it's the, the idea of Service Fabric is you can actually build your applications and you can build all of your microservices and you can deploy them into Service Fabric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, pa a PaaS offering, a platform as a service offering. Mm -hmm. But it's, all, it's, it's kind of a bit of a hybrid because it's also a bit of an infrastructure as a service offering as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, advantages of Service Fabric is that it is platform independent. So it comes with a set of binaries which you can install on your laptop, on your data center, on Azure, and even AWS or Google Cloud. And it doesn't matter. So you can take your microservices and host them anywhere, and uh, Service Fabric would be able to support it. So it exactly is a hybrid between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. But for a developer of microservices, it really gives him the ease to code microservices uh, with the experience that he already has. And he can use that experience to build microservices, and the service fabric would make the platform abstracted. So you, you can host the applications anywhere. So that's pretty amazing. So, mm -hmm. so service fabric, we can, it makes it easy to build microservices, mm -hmm. architectures and applications, because you build a, you build a little service, yeah. and you give them to service fabric, and it manages the scaling and the deployment across all of the mm -hmm. infrastructure that you have. Yes. Exactly. But it's pretty cool that you can actually, you can, if you're looking to go to the cloud, you can install Service Fabric locally now mm -hmm. yes, and mm -hmm. start deploying, integrating with your existing on-premise yeah. systems. Yes. And then when you're ready, you mm -hmm. can literally move it to the cloud then, can't yeah. you? So it's a yeah. great way for people to migrate large systems, mm -hmm. building it on the same tech that Microsoft's true. building their stuff on and get exactly. it out there. Yeah, true. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing to see how quickly you can deploy uh, services to Service Fabric. Once the cluster is up, you can uh, test it on your laptop with the dev cluster on mm -hmm. and seamlessly move this package to Service Fabric mm -hmm. and it works like a charm. Yeah, to wow. this, I would like to add that uh, we have been through engagements where people want to migrate their workloads to cloud and it takes quite a while for them to get their infrastructure ready or their applications ready to be able to deploy to cloud. But if you start plan uh, building and planning your applications on Service Fabric, then the, this migration becomes seamless. So you can have your application running in your data center today. And uh, the flick of a switch, you can move your applications to the cloud, and there would be no downtime, no change in experience. Yeah, it's yep. a really reduced cost. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> compelling story, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. And the, not uh, just sorry. Yeah, yeah. And not just from uh, our own data center, from AWS to Azure, Google Cloud to Azure, yeah. Which yeah. Linux yeah. to Windows. Yeah, <laughs> it covers all of those. Covers all of those bases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, as guys have been doing it for a while, if you could each kind of give me one tip. So, for people who are out there and they're saying. I want to get into Service Fabric. Mm -hmm. What's a tip that they're not going to find in the documentation that you found? What's a bit of a war story that you can give them that's mm -hmm. going to save them some pain? But that's an interesting question because Service Fabric is very well documented for the yeah. first case. It's probably the most documented service in Azure. Mm -hmm. But um, as a developer for Service Fabric or as an uh, operations person who wants to manage Service Fabric deployments, the first thing he probably wants to learn is the dashboard itself, because the dashboard actually gives you a lot of details about the service fabric cluster. Mm. It talks to you about the cluster, the applications you've deployed on it, 
the number of services on each applications, number of replicas of each applications, yep. and their health, including your uh, your update clusters and your fault domains and etc. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's very critical for anybody who's associated with Service Fabric to understand how the dashboard works. Yeah, awesome. That's a great tip. Yeah. So another tip that I would like to add here is that you have to let go of your habit of having to store your state data in an external storage. Service Fabric actually gives you the ability to store the state close to your application. So your state is packaged in the same VM as your application is. This reduces the turnaround time of each and every request. So the state is like just right there with your application. Yeah. Which is weird, because I know <laughs> I've, I've, I've spent years going, yes. getting out of like, we used to store state with our application, mm -hmm. and now we've been working on being stateless for yes. years and years and years, and now it's kind of come full circle again. Mm -hmm. And sure. to get that really hyperscale performance, we're actually moving back to more stateful services again. Yeah. Yes. Which I find really, really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so guys, you know, it'd be great if there was some kind of book around that kind of helped us. Oh, you do have a book. Yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> we, we dreamt about it last night, and we already wrote a book for you. So That's we have awesome. a book uh, written, we are, are co-authoring co a book yeah. uh, on microservices uh, on Azure. And where's um, the best for us to find more information about that? So you can visit the link, microservices-with-azure.com, uh, to pre-order our book. Excellent. Yep. Well, look, thank you very much for joining me on SSW thank you. TV. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, at Ignite on the Gold Coast. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah.